I was bit by a tick when I was seven years old and not diagnosed until I was 19 years old. I went through a lot of my childhood with severe pain, both physical and emotional. Most of it started in my knees and it grew on to strep throats, severe fatigue. The pain moved up into my hips and into my neck. I had migraines. I wasn't able to get out of bed. And then it became more neurological and my ability to focus and read and retain information was lacking and decreasing at a rapid speed that no one could understand. The brain function and the joint pain were the two things that we started to notice in a really, really major way. Then I started to experience when I was 16 years old, which I know is normal for many 16 year olds as well, but severe anxiety attacks that would put me into emergency rooms. Some people said it was rheumatoid arthritis. Some people said it was multiple sclerosis. Some people said it was fibromyalgia. Some people said it was anxiety disorder. Some people said it was learning disability and I needed to take antidepressants and exercise more. So it was very confusing. All the while they had done many Lyme tests. And the tests that they gave me came back either on the borderline where some of them would be negative but with enough titers nowadays that would point to Lyme. And the doctors just weren't as educated as you would have hoped. And my parents didn't know anything about Lyme disease really. And you know, I lived in an area where it was running rampant. I'm about to turn 19 years old and I experienced a severe mental breakdown. I had a complete psychotic episode for about two months. My father was so scared and so lost and so out of choices of how to help me that he decided that putting me into a mental institution and re rehabilitation center would be the answer. So he was forced to drug and sedate me and put me into an ambulance and I woke up in a psychiatric ward. At that place I met a doctor, Dr. Ellen Shander, and she saw right through me. So she sent me to another doctor and he took an array of tests and blood and came back with not only like off the charts Lyme disease, but also Bibesia, which is very similar to malaria. So I started with a very intensive antibiotic protocol, and I was on antibiotics on and off for about seven years. Um, orally and intravenously, I had a port in my arm for seven months, um, and it really did a number, of, like, obviously, on my body and my gut. So I told my dad, I don't think that I can do this again. I'm so sick of being sick. So he recommended at first Chinese medicine. And I reluctantly went because I knew that that required a lot of discipline and a lot of time and a lot of patience. And then he found a German homeopath. I had this energy that came over me that said, if I'm going to do this and I'm going to try this and live a full life and I'm going to try my hardest to really focus and, and do whatever I can to the best of my ability, I'll give it one more round. So I went on a very strict detox diet and with vitamins and supplements and we did detox IVs. They took the, my blood out and they put it through UV lights and put it back in and I was hooked up to these different German machines. So I did everything from Ayurvedic medicine to uh, sort of astrological methods, uh, meditations, different types of diets, uh, cranial sacral work, of course, Reiki, different types of homeopathic doctors I went to. It was a combination of, of meditation, low stress, really healthy diet, and keeping my mind positive and strong and knowing that I was constantly rejuvenating and healthy and healing. Once you find a tick on you, obviously get the tick in yourself tested immediately, uh, particularly with a few different labs because different labs around the country uh, diagnose in different ways and they read the blood levels in different ways and the Lyme disease tends to hide. So if you're with a Lyme literate doctor, which is very important to make sure that your doctor is Lyme literate because most are not, um, then you'll be able to detect and determine whether or not you have co-infections. And immediately going on sort of a, a 
very, very clean elimination diet where you have low inflammation foods like no nightshades, no peppers or tomatoes or potatoes or eggplants, um, very limited amounts of meat, um, absolutely no sugar because Lyme disease loves sugar, very low amount of dairy. Understand that you are going to go down a major journey of discovering how to love and take care of yourself because without self-love and the will to be healthy, you will not be healthy.